Hello, this is Victoria at Shop Eco, and I apologize first off for my voice today. Um, my throat is feeling a little scratchy. <laughs> so bear with me as I go through our topic today. So this is not exactly a question we get all the time, but it's definitely something we talk about all the time, which is cleaning your dirty makeup brushes. So I made sure to get these guys nice and dirty uh, so I can show you exactly what to do with them once they are. So first off, I wanted to discuss why it is important to clean your brushes and how often should you be cleaning them. So ideally, really once a week, you want to clean these brushes. If you pick one day of the week, even like right after you get home from work, you clean your face, you're doing your skincare, very quickly you can wash all of your makeup brushes and then they're going to be ready to go for the next day. Um, I have had instances where, you know, I accidentally forgot that night and I really needed them to be clean. I have cleaned them in the morning and then used my hairbrush on the cool setting. And that has done a really good job to dry them quickly. So once a week we want to be cleaning our brushes. And why do we want to be cleaning our brushes? So many good reasons. Um, and the reason why I say like I have emergency cleaned my brushes is with my foundation especially. So your foundation brush probably looks a lot like this or even worse. And the reason why this one in particular is so, so important to clean, aside from the fact that there is, you know, just natural bacteria on our skin, which is then getting on the brush, which then we're putting back on our face. And you're kind of playing that game back and forth. So you want to make sure that your brush is clean for that. And also um, the way that the makeup sits on your skin is going to be really affected by cleaning your brushes as well. So since this is so lovely dirty, I made sure you get it nice and dirty so you can see how clean it will be at the end. Um, putting this back onto your face after, you know, you have a clean face and you wanna have your makeup sit nicely after a week of this, it is not going to sit nicely anymore and it will truly make a difference for how the texture of your skin looks. So for myself, I can definitely tell if I have missed that week mark with my foundation brush, especially by the eighth day, the end of the day, I know I, it, I'll look in the mirror and I will see my skin and I'll see, Ooh, it doesn't look very good. The makeup's not sitting right. It's maybe um, separating or looking really dry on the skin. And that is one of your indicators that just give your brush a really good clean. Plus, you know, these are investment. They, they should be lasting you a long time. The only reason why I have gone through two of these brushes is because I accidentally dropped mine in the toilet <laughs> when I was on vacation once. And, uh, I, and it's funny because I started cleaning it afterwards and I did a really good job of cleaning it and then I thought to myself, there's no way I'm ever putting this on my face. Why did I bother cleaning it? Uh, so then I got myself a second brush, but provided that you don't drop it in a toilet, it should be lasting you a very long time. So aside from you know the bacteria, keeping it clean, um, having it sit better on your skin, and again, with the bacteria, keep that in mind, um, that's gonna help to prevent breakouts on the skin. Again. Uh, with all of them but with again the foundation especially because it's covering such a large portion of your face but the blush and bronzer as well and sometimes you know you're switching up which colors that you're using so you want to make sure that your brushes are clean and fresh for that so um aside from okay so we did bacteria i'm going through the checklist in my mind with bacteria making it sit nice on your face the fact that it's an investment yes so um some people have you know told us in the past with their other brushes that like bristles are coming out things like that that shouldn't be happening as long as you're treating your brushes correctly that shouldn't be happening at all and i will show you again exactly how to clean your brushes to keep them you know to live as long as they possibly can the other thing that we are going to use is fairhaven's makeup brush cleaner so this is their olive oil soap, very simple, very minimal. No essential oils because over time that can start to degrade the glue and the bristles. So again, protecting that investment that you've made um, and you know keeping it up as long as possible. We've had the brushes at the store for a very long time and this is all we have ever, ever used. And then um, that's what kind of prompted Fairhaven to make these labels specifically for their soap was we were using them in store, why aren't we encouraging other people? And then this way it just says exactly what it's made for. So 
This soap, um, for myself, I use it exclusively for my brushes. I set that aside. I use my other soaps for other things. This one lasts me just about a year um, sitting at my sink. This is the only thing I use it for. So this, for you know, the small amount that it costs, is a worthwhile investment to keep your larger investments very healthy, we'll say. So let me show you how to do these things because it, there's a couple tricks, but it's not difficult by any means. But I really do want to like get in there and show you exactly what to do. Uh, so let's do that. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so under free flowing water, make it a little bit warm. So I'm making it a little bit warm here, letting it run for an extra second. We're going to take our soap. This is the one that we've currently been using. It's very well loved so far. And I'm gonna start with, air quote, an easy one. So this is our big fluffy blusher bronzer brush. And you can see it's got some beautiful bronzer on there. So I'm gonna wet our soap. And I'm going to wet our brush, but I'm going to wet it downwards. We don't want the water to get in where the glue is. I'm gonna turn that down a bit so you can hear me. So we don't want the water to get in where the glue is because over time that can loosen, and then that's when the bristles are gonna to start to fall out. So we wanna keep it downwards and get it nice and saturated. And even like, I like to work it in my fingers as well. So I'm gonna fluff it up on the soap, get it nice and fluffy so you can see nice and wet and soapy in there and then instead of using anything fancy I'm just gonna use my hand so again I'm gonna fluff it up on my hand here to work the soap through the bristles and I like to introduce a bit of water going back and forth and then I'll slightly run it under the water as well so now that you can see it's extra, extra soapy, I'm gonna squeeze out the extra soap. But I'm as I'm squeezing the soap out, I'm also pushing the bris bristles inwards so I'm not pulling all the bristles out. So I'm still keeping it um, you know, intact as much as possible. And I'm literally just working that water through and then squeezing until the water runs clear. So I do like to do with the big fluffy ones, one last twist to make sure I didn't miss anything. All the water is coming out clear. So I'm going to then lastly take a towel. I like to put the whole thing in and rub the handle off as well because sometimes you know you get makeup on the handle. So make sure the handle's all clean and squeeze the bristles. And then when I'm done that, so you can see how much water already came off here. I like to do a fluff around to spread out all the bristles. And although it's not completely dry, it's pretty dry right now. Um, not that I would use it in this condition because I want it to be completely dry, but it's gonna be dry definitely by morning, but more so likely before that. So that is our big fluffy brush, which is super easy because it's so, um, wide essentially but the bristles aren't as densely packed as some of the other ones that we have so that is one example um, so a brush like this that's dual ended um, it might try and trick you again for thinking that you can't put the water a certain way but we're gonna just do it the exact same way fluff it up here and then work the soap through the bristles. And then it looks pretty clean already. So I'm just gonna work it one more time. through, And you can feel the consistency. So you can feel the soap in the bristles as well. So that's always a really good indicator of how clean it's going to be because if there's any soap residue left over that's going to uh, stick in the bristles and then not sit nicely and you'll see it the next morning your bristles won't look as as pretty as they should so again I'm going to give this a little squeeze I'm going to give that a squeeze wipe down this handle for a minute to get, get all those fingerprints off and then 
dry this up. A little pinch. And then they're beautiful, ready to go. So all that pink and it was the, the vanilla color on the other side is all gone. So these two brushes are definitely ones that people struggle a little bit more with because the bristles are so densely packed. But again, you're just gonna do the same thing and really work the water into the bristles. Get your handy dandy soap. I'm pressing fairly hard, by the way, to really get this one, especially the, the bristles are shorter and densely packed. So I really want to get the soap in there. And so I can tell that it's not ready. I don't know if you can see like that soap that's still sitting there. So for instance, if I were to squeeze, you can still see all of that soap that's coming out. So I know it's not, it's not ready just yet. So I'm going to keep working the water in there. Yeah, rinsing is such an important part of this. So again, I'm squeezing and that's looking much cleaner. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my handle off and give it a good squeeze and then fluff it out. Alrighty, that looks nice and clean and beautiful. So last but not least, this guy, which again, we find over the years gets the most staining and definitely the, the most used uh, brush that we have here. So I'm giving that a nice good fluff. <laughs> and really, again, working it in. I'm, again, pressing fairly hard so you can see all that soap that's coming out and working its way into the, the brush. So you can see now that the suds have stopped. Chances are we're almost there, but if I gave it a good squeeze, you can still see some soap coming out of the top there. So we're not quite ready, so we're gonna keep working that water in. And you can see this doesn't take a long time. This really, I mean, I'm explaining what we're doing here. Um, so it's taking a little bit longer than normal, but if you've got a lot of brushes, maybe five minutes it should be taking you. Um, so again, I wanna clean off my handle. Really give a good squeeze. I'll show you so you can see how dry it is in this area. This one holds on to a lot of water. So you can see how much water is still in there. And then again, fluff it out. And I don't think you can see my other side here. So then I just lay them on the counter to, to dry overnight and that's it. They just lay just like that. And when you go to pick them up in the morning, I mean, give them a good feel. I can definitely feel the wetness in this one, but give them a good feel. And that's it. So thank you so much for going on the clean brush journey with me. I hope that was helpful for you and I hope this is a good reminder to clean your brushes. Your skin and your makeup products will thank you. Um, and it's also not a bad idea if you've got some palettes to give them a spritz with um, rubbing alcohol every so often. Um, that does help to preserve the products. And uh, extra little tip here, if you have one of the palettes, especially the ones that are removable, if they ever break, this has nothing to do with brushes, but something that just popped into my head because of the rubbing alcohol. If they ever break or if you hit pan in the middle, that's when I find the outside of the makeup tends to then start cracking. Um, if you flood the pan with rubbing alcohol, as it dries and evaporates, it will actually bind the makeup back together, which is really nice. If you completely smash <laughs> your palette, there is a way to fix it as well. I have done that for people before. They've dropped their whole palette. So I'll take however many little bowls, put each color in a separate bowl, just finish smashing it up, and then one by one, flood the pan, add the, um, I can't remember what, I think I did, yeah, added the makeup back in, sprayed it with rubbing alcohol so it was flooded, smooshed it down with a little 
spoon or uh, some people have done like a paper towel so you get that nice texture on the top. Um, and then again, once it dries, it's gonna be one, one piece again, so much easier to work with. Not gonna be as pretty as when you purchased it, but it's definitely gonna be usable and uh, that's kind of the main point. So there's your extra little tip today. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know. And then you can win yourself a $25 gift card uh, just for us choosing the question that you had. Or if it's like a comment or a subject for a future video, that if yours is chosen, that will earn you a $25 gift card. So that is available for all Canadian residents, excluding Quebec. So please uh, reach out with any questions that you have. We'll be happy to answer them. And I hope you learned something new today. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.